Hello and welcome to Archives and Records Simplified. So a quick word about these videos. These videos are aimed at people looking for basic knowledge about archives and records and this could honestly apply to anyone. You may be a student that's looking to undertake the Archivist and Records Management course. You may be a librarian that's been asked to work with some archives. You might be a digitization manager who wants to know more about the collections and the material they're digitizing, or you may just have a general interest in archives and records. Um, this is a topic which I think will intersect with many industries, and the idea of these videos is to be as open and as usable for as many people as possible. The vast majority of videos in this channel will be less than 15 minutes, but some of them will get more complex in certain parts. Um, sources and further reading will always be posted at the end of the video and also I would just like to add if you have any questions feel free to put it in the comments below or if you have any requests if there's any topics you would like me to make another short video about please also feel more than free to mention them I'd be delighted to learn. Um, a quick word about me I'm an archivist based in London um, you can look at my LinkedIn profile here. And lastly, I apologise for my thick accent. I realise if you're not Scottish, you might be struggling a little bit to understand me. Therefore, there'll be a full transcript posted in the description at the end of each video. Okay, I hope you enjoy the channel and you find this of use. Also, if you find these videos useful, I would be really grateful if you could like and subscribe and possibly hit the bell button as well. Thanks. Okay, so this video is another book review, and the book being reviewed in question is Records and Information Management by Patricia C. Franks. Okay, so a quick overview. The book in question was published in 2013, and that's the one that's getting reviewed here, but there is a 2018 edition, and um, yeah, that one's available if you want to read that one instead. Uh, so Patricia C. Franks, she's an information professional based in America um, and she has a really long and impressive career which also includes work in academia and I found it interesting that she's also got a bit of a, a background looking at website archiving and the use of social media so I thought she's a really good author in a sense that she's got the more traditional background but she has been quite involved in the sort of more technical development which I think is um, which I think is a really big plus. Uh, every chapter in this book also has a practical case study provided by another author, which is a really nice touch. So there are 12 chapters and each chapter is on a specific topic and she's sort of quoted another article or case study by another author of the end each one and it's actually really useful. Um, the book is definitely more records management and information government focused overall. But if you're looking at this book from an archival perspective, there is some content there relevant to that. And plus, just general, even if you are an archivist, I think understanding the records management process and some of the things that records managers do really can help you in so many ways. Um, and again, I always, always say with these book reviews, this video is never a substitute for reading the book. Usually what I'll go over is I'll go over the structure of the book and I'll make a few notes, but you would need to read the book uh, to get the full effect of it. Okay, so again, because there's 12 chapters, I'm going to split each chapter into four groups of three. So starting with chapters one to three. Chapter one, notice the distinction between primary and secondary value. That's something I've discussed myself in other videos. Uh, chapter one also discusses the history of records management and attempts to formalise the sector. Uh, chapter one, notes that records are often easier to create, but harder to manage, which I think is, is a very a very shrewd observation and probably quite accurate when you think about it. And in the first chapter, Frank really notes the importance of how knowing the organisational context in which records are created is really important. Uh, chapter two then begins to look at the challenges of increasing volumes of information, changing legal and changing legal frameworks. Uh, chapter two also talks about a good information governance programme and how this can improve the retention of valuable records and also minimise risks such as losing files. Uh, and you know, Franks also makes some really good points about how different industries have different regulatory frameworks. So the health industry or the nuclear energy industry sometimes have their own standards 
that they'd need to adhere to. But going back a little bit to what she was saying about having a really good information governance program, like she really demonstrates that point really well. And, and it is a good point to make is that if you ever are developing any sort of records management strategy, um, the more developed and the more systematic your strategy can be, uh, the much better it'll be overall. You, you tend to want to try to avoid as many ad hoc decisions as possible. Chapter three discusses the categories of digital data that is created and particularly notes the value of metadata and classification systems. Uh, Franks also notes that metadata must be explicitly recorded to ensure context, content and structure. And I think that's also a really good point. I think with metadata, sometimes we maybe take it slightly for granted because digital files these days often have their own natural metadata. So for example, this YouTube video we are watching has a sort of instant date, time, uh, length of video, etc., which is created automatically. But you often, in many cases, you need a little bit more than that and you need to make a specific mental note to create it. So her, her advice overall throughout this book is really practical and really relevant. And I think that's probably one of the examples. Okay, chapters four to six note that retention scheduling is a key task and the retention schedule is a key policy document. Uh, this chapter also notes some of the practical aspects of creating a retention schedule. So if you ever work in records management, retention scheduling is probably one of the most important things you'll do. And this really helps you keep a sort of intellectual track of the records you create and makes you, it gives you an opportunity to plan for their disposal or eventual archiving. And you know, a retention schedule is probably at the heart of a lot of records management functions. Chapter five notes that records management has become a more active role and really re-emphasizes the importance of understanding the organizational context in which records are created. Uh, chapter five also really emphasizes the significance of metadata and also discusses various metadata standards by information type, including Dublin Core, which I've used a lot myself and I highly recommend. Chapter six then delves into the way technology has changed records management and also notes the use of content management systems. Uh, chapter six also discusses migration and the growing trend towards cloud computing. I think I intend to talk about this a little bit later in the slide, but that's actually one of our shrewdest observations. So this initial book was written in 2013 and that's definitely a trend that has developed beyond then. I, th I think she was quite I think she was quite clever to note that at that, that time, um, because that's definitely followed on. Cloud computing is more common than it was seven years ago. Okay, chapters seven to nine. Chapter seven discusses the importance of identifying trends and notes the ways people can do this. So this is to do with emerging technologies, um, which obviously has a big impact on in how information is created, used and preserved. Uh, Franks talks about some of the complexity of websites and the emergence of cloud-based cloud systems. And she also gives some advice about how you can identify trends and how you can sort of stay in touch with the rest of the sector. Uh, chapter eight demonstrates that disaster planning can be vital to the survival of an organization. And she notes that disaster planning also requires the input of various types of professionals um, such as people in IT or all different professionals within a department and um, maybe people within finance as well etc and she describes how records managers can contribute to business continuity plans. Uh, in chapter 9 notes the importance of setting objectives and monitoring progress such as freedom of information situations and risk assessments and in this aspect she does seem to go into some of the legal frameworks just a little bit more, but she really does talk about these within a sort of organisational and technological environment. Uh, and of course, chapters 10 to 12. So chapter 10 takes us into the world of inactive records and archives. And here she discusses the various different media types and the development of digital preservation. Uh, the theme of this chapter is controls of both digital and paper records. And I think that's a really important lesson um, in today's society, it's a lot easier to create records and it's to manage them, as Frank's herself noticed. And I think that one of the things you can have 
Uh, one of the problems you can have is that you can often create so many types of the same record or the same document that it, it, you can maybe overlook long term how damaging that can be. And I, th I think that's a really good practical bit of advice, um, but not just for records managers, but I would say for anyone that manages information in any sort of capacity. Uh, chapter 11 notes the value of formal education and certifications. And she also notes the value of ongoing tra training and how some professionals pursue this in an, in, 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 a, in an always changing environment. And I think, again, this is a really good point. I think one of the sort of themes throughout Frank's book is that technology and the legislative framework and organisational context are changing really fast and that you really need to, in order to really sort of survive in this sector, you really need to be sort of aware of how fast things can change and you should honestly see education and training as an ongoing task. And very lastly, chapter 12 emphasises the control of information that is described to be records. Uh, this chapter notes that value comes from the use of records more so than the controls placed. So it's really how you use it more so than how you control it. And Franks also notes, notes the importance of information governance and reducing risk, improving discovery, increasing transparency and improving workflows. OK, so a few sort of conclusions and observations overall. So Franks clearly has a wealth of experience in the case studies, really add a lot of additional detail. That was actually one of my favourite parts about her book. Uh, the book covers various topics and concepts, but there's a few common themes, especially understanding the organisational context in which records are created. That's something that Shepard and Yule write about, and the changing technical environment, or even maybe not so much changing, but I would say evolving. That might be a better word to describe that. Um, some of our observations in, two th in the 2013 edition that I've reviewed were slightly ahead of their time, such as the move towards cloud-based information management systems, so that at least suggests to me that her advice on sort of monitoring the technology and keeping up with trends is probably worth listening to, because she seems to be quite good at that herself. And overall, this is a very good book, and I, re I recommend looking at it for anyone who's either an experienced records manager who's looking to brush up on certain themes or topics, or even for a beginner who's looking to get a grasp of some of the key topics. I did get a feel for the book that is aimed slightly more towards the latter, but as I say, I've been working on archives and records information management for about five years, and there were things that I think quite interesting as well. So I would definitely say in the theme of keeping your education going, you should always be looking to do more reading and learn more where you can. OK, and thanks a lot. So I hope this video has been useful. Feel free to leave any comments below if you have any questions or if you have any, if you have any recommendations for future videos. And if you find these videos useful, I would be very grateful if you could like and subscribe and possibly hit the bell button as well. I'm hoping to do a lot more of these videos in the coming months and year and liking, subscribing and hitting the bell button will make it more likely that you will see updates in your feed.